Another Nintendo Direct has come around, and joining me is Chelsea Rothman to discuss it. What are my thoughts? What are her thoughts? My name is Nothing Just Go, and this is NVG Discussion! So Chelsea, uh, the Direct was okay. What's your solid opinion of it? Um... It was kind of a lot of third party, a lot of stuff we were already expecting. Um, Project Guard is alive. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect that thing to see the light of day. <laughs> I don't think anybody <laughs> did. But I'm still waiting for Project Giant Robot. Um, I think actually uh, that thing's dead because no one liked that at E3. I heard that because I actually heard rumblings that Guard is coming back in Star Fox. But I, I, I heard that uh, Giant Robot's like completely dead because no one enjoyed that at E3 and I guess they couldn't figure out a way to um, make it work. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really surprised about that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's nice to see that like there is a lot of Amiibo functionality, which I mean, at this point, it's just kind of like whenever Nintendo releases a new game, there's going to be Amiibo. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, a lot of the uh, Amiibo functionality in games, it's not really that important, like... But with Star Fox, it's actually kind of cool that you can... I, how, how does it work again? You can play, like, retro levels? Like, yeah, was, yeah, and then, like, your R-Wing turns into, like, the classic R-Wing. Oh, yeah, true. That's that's really cool. And the thing is, Star Fox had kind of been losing faith over the last few months, but the, the Direct actually... um, It actually uh, reinstalled my faith in the game, because the tell... Cause they acknowledge that the levels are going to be the same as 64, but the way that it's being constructed, it makes it feel completely different. Like with the teleporters, the transformation, and the branching paths, it all looks like like a really solid game in my opinion. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I think it's something that it's just been a complaint of directs I've had for a while now, that all the announcements felt incredibly underwhelming. Well, yeah, it's, it's kind of a direct. It, it's a direct. Like, usually they just update information about um, about games. They don't really, like, reveal anything new. And there probably wasn't too much to reveal about Star Fox Zero that we don't already know yet. So I guess that's why it felt a bit underwhelming. And also that they announced a new Paper Mario. Like, they didn't save that until E3. Like, I would understand if it was, like, another 3DS title. But, like, it's a Wii U title, and it's Paper Mario. Like, you'd think they would give it a little bit more care. Well, it's it's also because um, with E3, they're probably saving a lot of their bigger games, and clearly they don't consider Paper Mario to be a real a big game anymore. Yeah, I know. They were like, oh, hey, Sticker Star was a great game. Let's make it, but with paint instead. Though, um, I did take a... I was really salty when I was watching it, but when I um, rewatch it, it kind of looks a bit better. At least we might get a decent story this time, because it's not just Bowser kidnaps Peach. There's, and we really don't know much about it. So maybe there's potential to be good stuff in there. I really don't know. What are your thoughts? I think... Again, I think we should give it a chance. Wait till there's more info. We know nothing about the battle system, except for the, the card stuff. Yeah. We, have, we have no idea if there's partners. We have no idea if the stickers are coming back. Um, I actually don't think there are partners in the game. Like, we did see a paint bucket thing walking around, but uh, that's probably going to be, like, the crown curtsy in a sticker star. And, like, in most of the footage, we uh, don't really... We didn't really see, like, any partners, so I'm assuming if there's going to be partners, they'd talk about it. But so yeah, it just seems... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> this seems more like a... It just... The thing about Paper Mario is, even if this game seems fun, why can't they just make a Thousand Year Door-like game instead of constantly reinventing it? Why can't it just stick to its roots? There's nothing wrong with it. I know. I yeah. know. Like, I don't know what's going on over there. Like, they probably just like, oh, we should try and innovate the genre. But, like, the last time they did that, like, the only good innovation of the genre was Super Paper Mario. Yeah, and even with Super Paper Mario, it was a great game. But I don't want another Super Paper Mario. I'd want, like, another thousand your door, because that's what Paper Mario was made to be. Oh, yeah. It's... I'm in, I'm in full agreement. Okay, so, um, uh, is there any other, like, third-party games announced that you really want to talk about? I mean, there we finally got an English title for Shimagami Tensei. Does that, like, interest you at all? Like It anything? interests my sister. <laughs> 
<laughs> she was she was we were talking about it over dinner. It was really funny actually, because um, uh, she was like, "Oh, I heard that there's this like new cutesy like idol game." I'm like, "Yeah, that's the Fire Emblem Persona game." She's like, "No, it's not." I'm like, y "Yes, it is." <laughs> and she was like, "What?" <laughs> it, its name its name though is really weird. What's it called? Like Tokyo City what's something it something like that. I don't know. I'm just calling it Fire Emblem Modern AU. I'm, I'm calling it SMT featuring Fire Emblem, because that's pretty much what <laughs> it is. That's exactly what it is. Like, it plays exactly <laughs> like a Persona game. Not even a Shin Megami Tensei game. It plays like a Persona game. Yeah. I did like Persona, though, so it might be good. I don't know. But, like, um, it has as much Fire Emblem involvement in that game as Monster Hunter does, which that game looks really good. Just too bad I don't really like Monster Hunter that much. Yeah. Like, I, I, it looks exciting for the people who like Monster Hunter. For me, I'm just like, eh. Yeah. Eh, never got into the grinding. Yeah. What I, about I uh, that Federation Force? Okay, I just find it hilarious how the whole freaking time in Federation Force, they were pretty much explaining, please don't hate this game, please, it's really good. It's really cool on Nintendo to acknowledge the feedback that I got from E3 and explain it instead of just ignoring it and marketing it. Like, good on them, I guess, to at least acknowledge their fan base. If only they do the same with Paper Mario. What are your thoughts? It was sort of like the yarn guy, except not as charming. <laughs> What because yarn? the guy was like, because you remember at E3 when the yarn guy, right? when uh, he revealed Yarny, or Unravel, rather. Oh, yeah. Uh, which just came out. I actually haven't had a chance to play it yet. Um, yeah. But, um, and he was like, oh, this is Yarny. Yarny's been on many adventures. I'm so passionate about Yarny. I made a Yarny. Please love Yarny. And everyone fell in love with Yarny. <laughs> and so we, and this guy is just like, this is Metroid Federation Force. I worked really hard on it. Please like my game. Please like Federation Force. Thank you. You know, you know what? The game actually looks kind of fun. Like, I again, I probably won't get it since uh, Metroid's not a game I like. But in terms of, it's a it's a multiplayer Metroid game and it's online, right? Yeah. So it, it actually seems like kind of interesting. Like, so what if it doesn't have Samus? Like, so what if it's not a conventional Prime game? It still seems like a pretty fun game in my opinion, and I think. The fan reception is going to start to warm up to it after they explain thoroughly why it's a good game. Did, did that, like, change your perspective on the game at all? Honestly, at this point, if it's an affordable game, I might try it out. But if, like, if I don't have people to play with, like, why would I play a team-based game? Well, it's online, though, so it'll probably be, like, Triforce Heroes where, like, you can probably. get matchmaking and stuff, though, with no voice chat. But here's the thing that I found weird. Um, the new Nintendo 3DS didn't really sell well, and this game doesn't exactly have the biggest appeal. So, do they want the game to tank by making it new Nintendo 3DS exclusive? Like, like I, I have a feeling that this game will flop due to the really low install base of the new Nintendo 3DS. I'm inclined to agree with you, but at the same time, Nintendo 3DS in general has just made Nintendo... It, it's one of their most popular systems, I think because of the lower price point. Compared to, um, if they released it on the Wii U, I feel like not enough people would play it. Um, I do feel like releasing it on 3DS, because it's also going to have local multiplayer, right? Yeah, but it's it's only, it's new 3DS exclusive though, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, I'm pretty, did they, I'm, oh. that's what I was saying earlier. I'm pretty sure they said it's new 3DS exclusive, which is why yeah, I think Yeah, that's it's good. Gonna that's going to hurt it. I mean, like, look at the sales of Xenoblade 3DS. Like, it tanked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I'm surprised <laughs> that they made it new 3DS exclusive. But I guess, like, they said there was going to be uh, new 3DS exclusive games, and they didn't do much with it. But I guess they're doing more with it now. With I don't think Federation Force is going to be the thing that's going to drive people to get a new 3DS. So I think what would drive them is stuff Nothing. like... No, 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 but it, like if Hyrule Warriors Legends was exclusive, I think it would flock people to buy the new 3DS. Well, it pretty much is an exclusive since I heard it's borderline unplayable on the 3DS yeah. version. Because yeah. the frame rate tanks. Yeah. Speaking of which, what did you think of the DLC characters for Hyrule Warriors? Because I'm... Um, you're a big my fan body, of that My body is ready to play as the boat. <laughs> <laughs> my body is so ready. <laughs> I didn't realize he had a name. I thought he was just called the King of Red Lions. Well, obviously, you have not played enough of Wind Waker. <laughs> they didn't mention his name in Wind Waker. Yes, they did. <laughs> they just called him... Did they? Yes, they did. Really? Yes, they did. <laughs> huh. 
Why do they add medley though and not Groose? I mean, Groose is like amazing. Because they're gonna announce Groose later. Like we all didn't expect Tingle to actually be in there. Yeah, that's true. And they said there's four packs coming. So. Yeah, one of them <laughs> has to be Groose. It better be. I will. I will. Like I don't like Hyrule Warriors, but if Groose is not in that game, I will be very, very even more salty than I was with freaking Color Splash or whatever. I'm hoping one of them's gonna be um, sort of like uh, about Zelda U. Like, it's going to be promotional with Zelda U. Oh, yeah. Actually, I didn't think of that, but that's actually a really good idea. That, that it's probably a good will... idea, but is Nintendo going to take advantage of it? Yeah, of course. That seems like totally like a Nintendo thing to do. Because like, there'll probably be a pack coming out the same time as Zelda U, and like you'll be able to use Zelda U characters in Hyrule Warriors. Yeah. Yeah. So that seems like a really interesting idea. Um, The Mario Maker... Um, the Mario Maker costume, the, the new costumes and DLC stuff seems really cool. It's really cool you can finally put keys in the game to have boss fights and stuff. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to seeing the levels that come out of it. Um, yeah. They're going to get, like, really, really hard. Like, just watching at um, Austin Games Unquick this year, they did, like, a speedrun race. It was blind. They got, like, four, eight of the best, like, uh, speedrunners who also happened to play uh, Mario Maker. And um, those levels were insanely hard on their own, and they utilized some really unique gameplay strategies. So now with the inclusion of keys, like, puzzle levels are going to, like... Yeah. Whoosh. Yeah, that, that's true. I didn't think... I thought it was just going to be used for, like, boss fights and stuff, but that's a good point. And, like, there's going to be a lot of cool, like, puzzles and maze ideas with the keys. And um, But the thing that kind of perplexed me is the, the, the hard mode. When I played expert mode, those those challenges were i mean those levels were borderline unplayable then now they're adding like a super expert mode or whatever how hard are those levels gonna be well you'd be really surprised like you should look up the um awesome game sun quick uh mario maker like those levels are insanely difficult and those like speedrunners are running through them blind like not knowing what they were before are they like kaizo levels yeah 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 they're like kaizo levels yeah because the thing is when i play hard mode I, there'd be some Kaizo levels there already. So I'm curious how hard expert mode's gonna be. At least it's only six levels though, so it'll be easier to beat. It just like the levels will be hard. You have to, you have a hundred lives to beat six levels, so I guess that's a bit more fair. A, um, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Um, is there anything else that we haven't touched up upon that we uh that we need to talk Kirby. about? Kirby. Oh right, right, right. I knew. Okay. So, the Kirby game looks really good. I just wanted a Return of Dreamland type game, but this Kirby game looks really good. I yeah. Mean, look, yeah. Yeah. And I like the inclusion of the robots. Yeah. Um, and I really like the amiibo functionality with it. But Me again, too. just another announcement I felt was underwhelming. Like, they announced a new amiibo line, and they're just like, oh, yeah, there's going to be amiibo. Don't worry. Have fun with it. Yeah. It's like, uh -huh. Is it coming out for 3DS or Wii U? It's 3DS, oh, okay. not Wii U. I guess because they're like, oh god, the Wii U's tanking. Might as well not put any games on it. That's why we've gotten two 3DS Kirby games and no Wii U Kirby games. Unless yeah, you count I know. Canvas. Unless you count, oh, I guess there's Rainbow Curse, but I don't really count that as a proper Kirby game. Yeah, but I mean, it's it looks like a lot of fun. And yeah. I like to see, I do like to see every time how they try to innovate the copy abilities, but still, like, I want them to go back to Kirby 64. I want them to do the dual abilities again. Because that was honestly one of the best game mechanics they've ever come up with. I agree with you, but I don't think... I think um, they're sticking to their normal Kirby formula with, like, Superstar type game. Because I think that game is, like, more popular amongst the fan base. So they're doing more conventional Kirby games. I would love a 64-like game, too. But I don't think that's ever going to happen. Just like a normal Paper Mario I don't Mario even game. care if it's, like, another Kirby 64. <laughs> I just want the dual copy abilities back. Like, that was probably one of the, again, like, one of the greatest game mechanics <laughs> yeah. that they've ever made. I don't think they'll ever come back, though. Yeah. But ho here's hoping I'm wrong. The side Kirby mode, ge the side Kirby game mode looks really cool. It's like an action RPG. It actually might be more fun than the main Kirby mode. And it's Yeah, did uh, they say it's going to be online that you can play with friends? I was literally just about to ask you that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, but like if it's online, I may actually pick up the game. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, yeah. But there yeah. seems to be kind of like a running theme in this direct here. There's a bunch of games that look cool, but not for me. I think the only game that remotely interests me was Star Fox. I mean, um, and I do like uh, the, the pricing mechanics that they're doing with Zero and Project Guard. That's like really cool. Like if you can get, you can get Zero by itself if you do it online, but you can get both together. 
um, if you buy it physically. So, um, and, and I think Guard's going to be a really cool multiplayer mode. Yeah. I was just about to say, like, I think it'd be really cool to play with friends because you'd be like, no, get there, get there. Oh, my God. It'll be I, I may get both because that. Guard it's basically seems so much Plants fun. versus Zombies Garden Warfare, but with Star Fox characters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, exactly. Except you have nine different. Wait, in Plants vs. Zombies, do you have nine different monitors? On oh, the that TV? that I don't know. No, that that one. Plants vs. Zombies Garden Garden Warfare is um, you. I think you can deploy units, and oh, I see. but you get to play as one of the units and actually like kill the things. Oh, I see. But with Star Fox Guard, you have nine different monitors on your TV, so everyone's gonna have to look at different monitors and help out each. Oh my God, I just can't imagine. It's gonna be I insane. It's gonna be so much fun. I think I'm definitely gonna get both. I haven't fully decided yet. Yeah, I really want to get the the Hunters game, something Hunters, whatever it was called. At, oh, I don't even know what you're talking about. The oh. the, the multiplayer action adventure game. Oh right, right. That that does look really cool. Just again, not I my really, thing. I really, I want to play that with people. <laughs> yeah, too bad you probably won't. Well, I'm sure it'll be online, like Federation Force. Oh, it's definitely going to be online. Yeah. So yeah. But, yeah. But yeah. Again, running theme here. Lots of cool games, just none for me. Except yeah, <laughs> I'm just gonna wait it out till E3. I yeah. mean, especially if all the NX rumors are true, and especially if Beyond Good and Evil Two is yeah. going to be on NX. Like, that just takes off, like, one of my big E3 checklists. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I think we've pretty much covered everything important about the direct. Is there anything else you want to touch up upon? No, I, I think I'm good. All right, well, thanks for joining me, Chelsea. You're very welcome. And thank you guys for tuning in to another MVG discussion. If you like what you saw, you could uh, subscribe and press the I in the top right corner to go to other videos. Actually, tomorrow I'm doing a uh, video on my first look of The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. And if you want to be convenient, you can click one of the boxes here to go to the playlist of certain series that I'm doing, as I do plenty of them. Later. <laughs>